the National Security Advisor, board member of the American Conservative Union and a friend for a long, long time. Thank you, KT, for being here. Appreciate it. Let me let me first talk about the Red Sea because this is what's going on there is is essentially a blockade of the Red Sea uh, by Iran, and it's by Iran, and and we know their involvement in all this. I know the Houthis may be the ones with the guns, but the people directing and ordering it and everything. In fact. We learned last week that there was an Iranian spy vessel that was actually directly uh, directing the Houthis in terms of which ship to go after, how to attack it, et cetera. Couldn't we have at least, at the very least, have blown up that Iranian spy ship? You know, here, here's the problem. We've had three responses, three attacks um, in Iraq after having had 103 attacks on American interests, whether it's in the Red Sea, whether it's in Iraq and Syria. What have we done? We have encouraged the Iranian proxies to keep going right. because there's no penalty for what they're doing. And the worry is, I mean, the Biden administration thinks, well, we don't want to provoke them because maybe the war would expand. That's upside down thinking. What's going to happen is if we don't do something to stop them, if we don't respond in kind, they're going to keep escalating, keep escalating. It's a miracle no American has died so far. But once you start having Americans dying, then we're all of a sudden in a war that we haven't really thought through, we could have prevented. And so I think it's, again, upside down thinking. If you want to stop this, if you do not want it to expand, if you do not want it to escalate involving the United States, then do something now to take out those missile batteries, take out with the airfields that the drones are operating out of, get rid of them because Everybody should know that you attack the United States, the United States interests, you're dead. Yeah. You do not get to survive that. And so far, that's not what we've been well, doing. Well, we know that's what works. Message. You know, it's, it's almost like dealing with a crime situation because if you have deterrence, if you deter criminals' behavior, you'll have less criminality. And in 1988, we had a major, right. major problem with Iran mining areas of, uh, with some, some of them within its, its territorial border, et cetera. But, but international shipping lanes were mine. One of our ships, it was the USS, what was the name of that? It was, uh, I can't remember the name of the ship, but it was, it was hit. Uh, service, our service people were injured. Thankfully, nobody was killed, but some were severely injured. President Reagan initiated Operation Praying Mantis. I'm sure you remember it. You were with the Reagan administration. Uh, we, we destroyed, yeah. we literally destroyed half of Iran's Navy. And they didn't start something more. They, they creep back into their little caves and left us alone. It worked. Deterrence works, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it worked in the Reagan administration. We reflagged some of those commercial tankers and, and container ships. And then all of a sudden, Iran realized, well, if they're going to go after those ships, they're starting a war with the United States. They didn't want that. And so President Reagan did what he did, and you didn't hear from the Iranians for a number of years. At the beginning of the Trump administration, David, we had the same situation where the Syrians were um, sending aircraft from air, airfields in Syria to use chemical weapons against their own people. Mm. So President Trump took the decision of, let's just take out those airfields. Right. We did it. We did it surgically. We did it brilliantly. You didn't hear from the Syrians for another three years. But again, we've, we've had 15 ships hit so far. Uh, by the, the Iranian backed Houthis. We've had hundreds of ships that have had to take the long way around to avoid the Red Sea to go to their destination. Look at how far they have to go out of their way. Millions of dollars, probably billions of dollars, have been spent doing that. This is a blockade of the Red Sea, is an act of war, is it not? Yeah, these are international waters. And so, yes, it is an act of war, not just against the United States, it's against the world. But you know what it does, David? I keep thinking, okay, so what are the alternatives here? The Middle East, they're always fighting in the Middle East. They're always blockading something. You know, Reagan administration, Trump administration, Obama administration, they're always doing it. The far better solution would be to unleash American energy, American oil and natural gas. Yes. Let us be yes. the new Middle East. Yes. Let us be the part of the world that we could supply the entire world with energy. You know, Biden doesn't have to hit back militarily if he focused on just that economic element. I mean, we've seen, we, we have a chart that I think we can put up of the oil production, Iranian oil production. You saw it uh, when Trump came into office on the right hand of the screen, that huge drop downward is, is the maximum pressure mm -hmm. can, campaign of the Trump administration against the Iranians. And you see how, how it really hit them hard. They're, they're, 
oil production went down to close to zero. And then when it goes up again, that's when Biden came back into the office and stopped applying the sanctions that, by the way, were put in place by Congress. And so he, it can be argued that what he did was unconstitutional. But the bottom line is Iran would not have had the money to to pay for this war, to to pay for the October 7th attack itself if, if he hadn't, they hadn't uh, released mm -hmm. all that oil money to the Iranians. It's the same argument with Russia and Ukraine. Well, I mean, the Trump administration and the op that operation that we had, it was the idea the maximum pressure was to hit them economically as well as ever, other ways. But economically, you know, wars are expensive. If they don't have any extra money, they can't fight a war. We saw that Hamas and Hezbollah were complaining to Iran uh, when the oil prices went down to $40 a barrel. They were complaining, Iran, where's our money? You know, you've been supporting us. Where's our money? Iran didn't have the money. And so Iran, again, during the Trump administration, they were in their box. They couldn't move. The same thing with Russia. Oil prices were low. Russia didn't have any extra windfall profits to invade Ukraine or anybody else. The key to all of this, which we learned in winning the Cold War the first time around, is do it economically. That's to our advantage. We've got the ability to do it. We just don't seem to have the political will in Washington. And take care of our homeland security. I mean, we just got news over the weekend from NBC, of all places, that, that in fact the administration was planning to keep the spy balloon uh, thing under wraps entirely until the folks in Montana just looked up at the sky and could see the darn thing themselves, so they couldn't keep it under wraps. But their, their plan was to keep it from the public, to keep it from Congress. Uh, meanwhile, our, our national security is imperiled. I mean, this administration has done so much to imperil our national security. We haven't even begun to talk about the border. Yeah, again, it's upside down thinking. The Biden administration thought, well, we'll keep it from the American people. We'll don't let the American people know that our, our sovereign territory has been, you know, compromised with a spy balloon uh, because we don't want to have the Chinese be upset. We don't want to risk alienating them or they might cancel a meeting or something. Again, upside down thinking. If the, and, and this is the where it's really serious. This was a violation of America's territorial integrity and sovereignty to have a spy balloon flying over the United States. And the Biden administration's first response was not, how do we protect the American homeland? Right. How do we protect the American people? Their first response was a PR move. Oh, we want to make sure that nobody sees this and so we don't get blamed. And then their second move was to, you know, to again, appease China. It never works. And ultimately, they had to shoot it down because, as you said, some, some people in Montana looked they up at the sky up. and said, What's that? Of course, they didn't shoot it down until it went all over the United States. And, and it wasn't just by random chance that it happened to fly over some very important military bases. That's what the Chinese designed. But at the end of it all, remember what President Biden said? He said it was an, it was an embarrassment for the Chinese. It was just an embarrassment. I mean, you didn't buy that <laughs> for a moment, did you? No, nobody bought that. Yeah. No. And, and again, What's the president's sole response, primary responsibility under the Constitution? The national security of the nation. Of course. And he wasn't doing it. No. And he was trying to pull a fast one on the American people. It never works. KT McFarland, great to see, see you, KT. I hope you had a good Christmas. Happy Thanks, New Dave. Year to you.